Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday, I already briefly talked about the statement by President Biden about the possible cyber attacks from Russia. Well, wrote up some of the thoughts in a post uh, this morning, so nothing really that I didn't fundamentally mention in yesterday's podcast, but uh, if you want a little bit more elaborate written version, well, check the link in the show notes. And talk about Russia Cyclops Blink uh, botnet that's commonly associated with the Russian uh, cyber gang Sandworm uh, does now also go after Asus routers. Initially, it was more seen going after WatchGuard firewalls, but looks like they're now also expanding to some of the consumer products. Asus now has come up with some guidance that you should follow if you believe that you got affected by this particular malware. Essentially, what it comes down to is reset your router to factory settings, do apply the latest firmware, and then make sure that you don't use the default password and that you deactivate any remote access to the device, which should be the default setting and typically requires the advanced settings in order uh, to change it. It should, however, be noted that the latest firmware doesn't necessarily fix the vulnerability. That's still a little bit unclear what vulnerability or vulnerabilities are actually being exploited here, but just disabling remote management should be sufficient in order to prevent reinfection and installing the latest firmware is your best bet in getting rid of any remnants of the malware. So even if your router is end of life and you suspect it may be infected, then just following these steps uh, should clean it up for now. Of course, if it's end of life, uh, new firmware may not be available, so there won't necessarily be a patch. Now, sadly, that doesn't appear to be a simple way to detect if you are infected. It typically requires that you log in to the router itself via some kind of terminal or SSH and then check if any of uh, the respective processes are running or if some of the firewall modifications were made. But as long as you don't expose your admin interface to the outside, you should be pretty safe. And talking about patches, HP has released patches for a long list of printers that fix a buffer overflow vulnerability that could lead to remote code execution. Instead of uh, updating or in addition to updating, you may also want to consider disabling LLMNR. Uh, this will mitigate the vulnerability. You can do this in the network settings. LLMNR is used for some of the auto discover functionality of printers. So there could potentially be a side effect where it's not that easy to sort of automatically configure the particular printer. And what I would consider uh, minor updates for your Sophos UTM devices. One vulnerability fixed may leak the SHA-512 crypt passwords hashes for the device. Now, SHA-512 crypt is not terribly weak, but uh, certainly something that could potentially be a brute forest and also a post-authentication SQL injection vulnerability in the mail manager. This last vulnerability gets a high rating from Sophos, but again, remember it's post-authentication. And Velexity has an interesting write-up of some Mac malware that uh, they identified. They call it a gimmick. Uh, it has a couple of interesting features. It's sort of more advanced custom malware that we usually don't see much uh, for Mac OS. So if you have to protect Mac OS systems, uh, read the write-up and see how that malware exactly worked. Uh, don't focus on the hashes. Focus on the actual uh, techniques and procedures uh, being used here. 
And then, of course, the big news today is the possible breach of Okta following uh, the breach of Microsoft by the Lapsus uh, extortion group. Reason I covered this last here is that there's still a lot of speculation and not really a lot of facts out there, which makes it a little bit difficult to really assess what happened or what you should do. So the two sides of the stories are that Okta is saying that uh, they had in January a laptop compromised of a support engineer and that no customer data really was at risk. Labs has countered that uh, they actually had access uh, to a thin client uh, fra- used by an Okta employee. And with access to that client, they were able to reset the password and the multi-factor authentication of about 95% of Okta clients. Like I mentioned yesterday, uh, Lapsus has a pretty good track record uh, when it comes to sort of being able uh, to actually compromise uh, big organizations. So I wouldn't write off their claims. It's really hard to say what you should do as an Okta customer at this point. The problem with Okta is that they are in charge of authorization in your enterprise once you basically use their service. So it all depends on how well their internal systems are secured, whether or not an employee is able to actually perform the actions that Lapsus claims. If it's possible for an individual employee to actually change passwords and multi-factor authentication for a 95 95- of Okta clients, that in itself would be a potential problem. But that's really what happens if you are sort of handing over authorization to a third party that you are trusting that party to do the right thing and you usually have no to very little uh, influence in how the particular company manages uh, that process. So, If you're a customer, uh, keep listening to what Okta has to say and um, also a little bit keep an eye out uh, for what Lapsus is doing, but really not much additional advice I can give you at this point. Well, and uh, this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.